After I've imported the, um, the video file as uh, individual layers, uh, I'm now going to get set up for tracing each of the individual layers. So um, first thing I want to do is have these images not be quite as uh, high contrast. So I'm going to turn the visibility on all of them. And the nice little trick in Photoshop is that if you click and hold on the eyeball, you can just scroll up and turn the visibility on all of them. And now if I want to set the opacity for all of them, the shift key allows you to select everything in between two points. So I select the first one, hold down shift, select the last one, and I'm going to go to opacity of 65, I think is what I liked. And then I'm going to hit the first eyeball and scroll back down until I just have one. Then I'll click off of it, click back on the bottom one, and down here at the bottom, I have a little icon for new layer. Uh, it's also in the drop down up here, new layer, or shift command N. So I'm going to click on new layer. Now that's going to be a blank layer, and that should come in at 100% opacity. If I turn off the back layer, actually I had made one little change. Let me put it back. What it should look like for you initially is this because it is 100% opacity but there's no fill on it and we don't want to fill otherwise we're not going to be able to see our photo underneath so think of this like a piece of clear acetate that's on top of it it will pick up the ink that we put down but it's not going to interfere but in order for when we're working in Photoshop in order for us to know when we are on a transparent layer um, if it was just white or gray we would think it was filled with white or gray so they set it up with this little checkerboard that just tells us that's transparent. Well, we know that. So we're going to go ahead and make it white so it's a little easier for us to draw. To do that, we go to Photoshop, Preferences, Transparency, and Gamut, but Transparency. And you'll see that you can set the size of the grid and all of that, but we're going to make our grid not checkered. So one of the checkers is white. So we're just going to turn the other one into white. So I can go all the way up in the corner and I can double check that all my colors are set to zero and say OK and then OK. So, and if it wasn't transparent, I wouldn't be able to see through it at 100% opacity. We don't want to change, we don't want to leave it with a white fill and change the opacity because then your black lines as well as your white fill would become uh, transparent. We want our blacks to be 100% opaque and just the background to be transparent. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for each layer. So I click on the layer automatically when I do a new layer. It puts it on top of the layer that I have selected. And so I would do that all the way up to the top. So every layer has an image and then a transparent layer on top. Now, so that I don't accidentally work on the wrong layer, I want to lock all the layers except the one I'm working on. However, if I select a layer that's not visible, it doesn't allow me to lock it. So I'm going to click and hold on the eyeball and scroll all the way up to the tippy top and check that my scroll bar has gone all the way to the top. And then I'm going to select the layer on one end, hold down shift, select the layer on the other end, and click the little padlock. Now I'm going to turn the visibility back off of them. Okay, so all of those are locked, which means that if I tried to paint on this layer, it's going to say, no, you can't do that, it's locked. So that's good. So the only one I want to unlock is this transparent layer. And I want to make that visible and the one underneath visible. Now keep in mind, sometimes we've unlocked the layer we want to work in, but we've highlighted another layer. Whatever layer we've highlighted, that's what we're trying to work in. So again, it's going to tell me I can't do that because I'm trying to draw on a piece of paper that right now is invisible. So I need to be sure that I've selected the layer I want to draw on. And if accidentally I had unlocked this layer and I started to draw on that, well, the photo and the drawing will be fused together. So that's not going to work. When things like that happen, you need to know that 
Command-Z in Photoshop only goes back one level. If you need to undo more than once, you have to add Option, Command, and Z. And Shift-Command-Z will bring you back forward again. Optionally, you can go to the History palette, and it shows you about 20 of the last, last steps that you did, so you can go backwards if you make a mistake that way as well. Okay, so now I've got this layer is going to be locked. I'm going to work on this one, and I'm ready to start drawing. Now, I'm going to use the brush tool, and I'm going to use my uh, graphics tablet. I want to set my brush size. So I want to think about how big I want my line to be, depending on how detailed my drawing is going to be. So this line is a little bit horsey. It's a little bit big. So I'm going to go here, and actually this reminds me, if a five point is this big, that means the resolution of my image is probably pretty pixelated. Now, normally I would say you can never res up an image because you're not going to get a less blurry image. But in this case, we're just going to use the image to trace, and then we're going to get rid of the image. So if you look at this, when I draw, if you zoom in, my line is pixelated. So in this particular case, I can change the image size so that my drawing is at a higher resolution, even though my image isn't going to matter. So for this test, I'm just going to do it at 2,000 pixels wide and go ahead and say OK. I may give you slightly different parameters when we start um, doing some more advanced animation, but right now I want to make sure that you have enough space on your hard drive to work with this many frames. OK, when I do that, it's going to zoom in, so I'm going to hold down Command and press the zero key. So it zooms back out. I can always do Command plus to zoom in a little bit. Now I'm keeping in mind that I have 18 layers to draw, so I don't want to get super detailed about all the facial features when what this is really about is about uh, getting a figure to walk. So now I'm going to look again at what's my line size. And I could make that a little bit smaller if I wanted, or I could make it a little bit bigger. I think I'll leave it at five, uh, but let me just increase that for a second. When you change the brush size, when you come back out on this area, it should show you a circle or sometimes it's an oval if it's done like a calligraphy pen. It'll show you what size the pen is going to be. You can also do a quick sample and then Command Z and I can see that this has very um, straight edges. That's what hardness is. If I were to reduce the hardness, it's going to be more like a spray paint can. So right now I'm trying to imitate a line and I'm going to let my tablet do the finessing. So if I pick up my tablet now, I've got that. And if I start drawing, when I put very little pressure on the tablet, it gives me a thinner line. And as I increase the pressure, it gives me a thicker line. That's the big advantage of a tablet. But this line is still too big. So I'm going to go back down to five. Oops, five and then hit enter to get out of that. I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, to get a black line right now, we'll just work with black and white. If for any reason you have a different color in here, you can just hit the, um, the D key. That sets your colors to default and usually brings your black forward. You can also hit the X key, and if you look down here, you'll see that white goes forward or black goes forward. Right now, really, though, I don't want to draw a black line and then draw a white line. Otherwise, the white is opaque. I'm probably going to draw the black line and then use an eraser to erase it. So there's an eraser tool here. So let me do D again to bring the black forward. Let's say I drew and I didn't get it in the right place. I could Command Z or I could switch to eraser. If I hover over that, it shows me what the uh, shortcut key is, E. So it's easy. For brush, it's B, and for eraser, it's E. So if I go to E, I get the eraser. If I go back to B, I get the brush again. With the tablet, you're not going to be able to see this, but with the tablet, I can use my brush to draw. And if I flip my stylus over, 
I get the eraser. Now whatever you have set the eraser tools size to on their brushes is what the stylus size will erase. Now some of the um, some of the less expensive tablets they work just as well and a few of them don't have an eraser on the back side where you would typically see one on a pencil. What you can do instead is go to your system preferences assuming you've installed your tablets driver go down to your uh, your tablet and you will often have on these little click buttons here which I currently have disabled because I'm always pressing them by accident but I can set one of those clicks to erase uh, and then that means I can draw with my pen hold down the click and I can erase you set these clicks to whatever it ends up being that you do most often that you just want to have at your fingertips. So now I'm going to go ahead and do my first drawing. Takes a little while with the stylus, kind of get used to working with it. Sometimes to avoid uh, having to undo too much, I'll take my hand off the stylus. That way if I were to make a mistake and I pressed Command Z, it'll only take off a certain area of it. So use your own style, decide how detailed you want to be, but don't get too overly detailed with the facial expressions, because remember if I hit command zero, this is what it's going to look like. Um, on your second animation you'll be doing a close-up of the face, and then we'll talk about how you can sort of marry those two things together. Um, so for the rest of the rotoscope, what you're going to do is you're going to finish drawing the tracing. To start with, I'm just going to work on the one that's walking profile. And I'll do a tracing one by one. And you'll notice that as you continue to do the tracings, I remember that I want to lock the layers when I'm not using them. And unlock only the transparent paper that I am using. Um, and once you have finished doing a tracing for each one of this, you can go ahead and save the document. Save this as a Photoshop file, PSD. And there's a couple ways to, uh, when we're done with that, we, we're going to want to get rid of these photos. So I can A, delete them from the timeline, shift select them, and go to delete frames. It'll always leave the first one there, I missed one of them. So basically I delete all of them, but it leaves like a little placeholder there. Then I can select all of my frames again. This time I'll have the drawings in there. And I say make frames from layers. So this would be a photo, this would be a drawing, I don't have much of a drawing yet, this would be a photo, this would be a drawing. So now I'd use the command key, that allows you to select multiple things but that aren't next to each other. If I were to add shift, oops, it would suddenly select all of them. So I'm going to use the command key to select just the photos and I would go through all of them and I would hit delete frames and I have a few extras. And then once I've done that I can hit the play button and it will play the animation. If you want to loop it you change it from once to three times or forever. If you want to slow it down you shift select all of them and increase how long it's going to be visible on the screen. And this is the most exciting part because after you've done the drawing, you're going to get to see the drawing actually move like a video. Alternatively, since I have already saved this document, I could choose to delete my frames. Remember that when you delete the frames, you're not deleting the layers. But if I know I am done, done, done with my drawing and my tracing, I could do a save as. Anytime you delete a layer, always save as because you never know when you're going to want to go back to the original layered file. So this would be only if I'm absolutely sure I'm done with these layers. I could then select the photos and I could delete the layers. Wait. 
How do I duplicate the layers? Huh. Uh, oh, they're locked. So I'm going to need to turn the visibility on. And yes, animation is time consuming. I'm going to turn that on and then I am going to unlock everything. And then it'll allow me to de delete the layers that I want to. Hit the trash can, say yes, and then use command to select every other one again. And hit the trash can. So this time now I'll just have my drawings and so if I know I want to make edits to the drawings, but I don't need to keep tracing it, I'll do make frames from layers and it will, because um, sometimes as you work in the layers, it does weird, you'll notice it does weird things to your drawing on the timeline and you just need to refresh that by deleting it and, uh, and then going back to make frames from layers again. Um, and then that's it for now. Um, in the next step, we'll talk about um, exporting to video and uh, starting to bring things into Premiere and playing with them in there to do more complex things. Okay, thank you.